What's up, guys? It is your dude here, Leon, and uh, accompanied by Nigel today. Wanted to have a little chat. Just a few days ago, Markiplier uploaded a video called I Feel Lost, where he talks about his YouTube channel and just feeling like he has no direction and a lot of the troubles he's facing right now as a larger YouTuber compared to when he was smaller. Uh, and this type of video always interests me because it spurs uh, many different reactions within the YouTube community. So after this quick intro, I think, should I do the intro, Nigel? You fucking smell like baby powder. It's disgusting. Yeah, I'm going to I'm going to do the intro real quick and then we'll just uh we'll just chat a little bit. So Now Mark's a massive YouTuber, one of the most successful there is on the platform, creeping up on 17 million subscribers, easily makes seven plus figures a year uh if i'm just taking a wild guess uh so anytime this caliber of youtuber makes a video where they're not happy and excited and pumping out entertainment for you and instead are talking a little bit about their own personal lives some of the struggles and the problems that they face uh it kind of creates this reaction in the community that's uh, polarized in many ways. One of the responses you'll see people say is, oh, Mark, it must be so hard living in your mansion with all your money, being able to buy anything you want. Ooh, there's all these pro, how do you, you know, how can someone with money have problems? You're so successful, how dare you fucking complain in a video? I hate this line of thinking, right? Like there's this misconception that for whatever reason, there's certain levels of monetary value that your problems just disappear, right? Like when you get X amount of subs or X amount of views, all of a sudden you're not allowed to be depressed or you're not allowed to have problems. This is ridiculous. Money is incredible and I want much more of it, but it's just a tool that allows you to do things. It's not something that creates or finds fulfillment for your life or alleviates you of problems. When, when you have more money and it solves X problems, other problems start to arise. That's just the way life is. You solve some problems, and as you solve those, more problems arise, and you just learn how to deal with them as they come. So to anyone who thinks that people with money aren't allowed to have problems or talk about those problems, I think that's a bit shallow. Also, to any one of you who think that once you have X amount of money, you're not going to have shit to deal with any longer, I think you are a little bit disillusioned and should probably wake up to the reality that life is just a series of dealing with shit. Money or not, sure, you might have an easier time paying rent or be able to get that car you've always wanted, but I assure you that no amount of money will ever make life any less difficult to grind through. Now, other people will say that this is pandering, right? Mark's a pretty emotional guy. From what I've seen uh, in a lot of his subscriber specials and videos, he fucking cries a lot. The man just cries quite a bit. and. Uh, I don't personally have a problem with it because I think that Mark is remarkably genuine from what I've seen of him. But there's always going to be that group of people that are like, oh, he's crying, he's trying to elicit an emotional response, he's pandering for ad revenue, and it's like, that's such a tired argument. Sure, I think that maybe that happens on YouTube, but for a YouTuber, just, just by the sheer fact that he's a massive YouTuber and he's showing a little bit of emotion... Uh, and kind of that more raw side of himself, people just jump to this conclusion that he's trying to, uh, you know, pander or manipulate his audience just for money, which, I, in my personal opinion, I don't think Mark gives a fuck about how much money this video makes. I just think that when you're a YouTuber and you're spending fucking every single day working on content and building this relationship with an audience of people, you start to see them as someone you can talk to, right? Someone you can confide in. And I sh confide's maybe not the right word because it's not, you're not like telling a secret, but you talk and millions of people are listening. So when you're running into problems in your life, whatever those are, and you want to share them with your audience, I think that should be okay. Now, one of the definitions of pandering is a person that caters to or profits from the weakness or vices of others. I just don't see that in this particular case. I think there are plenty of people that manipulate situations and emotions on YouTube t for monetary gain. Joey Salads, Chris from Prank Invasion. These are more kind of the uh, incendiary 
or the inflammatory YouTubers that specifically create content to create this uh, visceral response from people that will get shares and outrage and anger just for monetary gain. That shit pisses me the fuck off and I hate it. But when you have someone that's, uh, you know, just wants to share a little bit what's going on in their life because they spend most of their time uh, putting out videos with this certain demeanor and a certain way about them, but they want to upload a video and be like, listen, it's not all fucking shit and rainbows. It's not all unicorns up my ass, right? And occasionally, even though I'm a huge successful YouTuber with millions of dollars, we all have our own shit. I think that's cool. Now, the reason seeing Mark's video made me want to make this video in the first place is because of how uh, some of these points I'm raising right now relates to me and my own channel uh, moving forward. Now, I know a lot of you guys that watch my content are YouTubers yourselves, and I think these are the kinds of things you have to think about as your channel grows and as you're growing as a creator and as a person, right? Like, my main goal has always been to create content that's entertaining and draws uh, your attention, uh, maybe makes you laugh or smile, but I also always want there to be an aspect of my channel where I can flip the switch and also just be me minus the comedic shit, right? My goal is to be able to strike a balance between comedic impact and, you know, entertainment through dialogue and music, whether commentaries, diss tracks. Um, but I also want to keep a certain level of emotional awareness and build this relationship with you guys that allows me to be a little bit more candid from time to time because not only do I want to be uh, an entertainer, but I want you guys to be able to get to know me a little bit. Somebody that has a little bit more of a perverse sense of humor than maybe many people uh, that I associate with in my everyday life. Uh, and YouTube is kind of a fun place for me to be able to experiment with that and uh, push the envelope a little bit. Uh, but also somebody that is, you know, in the process of buying a house soon and probably wants to have a family. So it's like balancing all these things uh, in just... I want to be able to talk about that in the process, and that's why watching this video from Markiplier uh, kind of spurred this in me, because it's like, all right, here's this guy who's hugely successful, and you see him as this fucking icon in the YouTube community, but at the end of the day, we're all just fucking regular people struggling with our own regular shit day to day, and I think that's just a powerful message to remember. It's so easy to idolize these people on YouTube, the fucking Tana Mojos, like her whole fan base is, idolizes her. She's just some fucking 18 year old clown that clearly didn't know how to handle herself. She's no different than any of us, except she has a lot of subscribers and that's true for anybody. We're all just very flawed human beings. Some of us just happen to have more money or more subscribers or more notoriety, but we all fucking put our pants on one leg at a time and we all occasionally accidentally shit our pants in Starbucks when we think we have a fart on deck, but it happened to be a little bit juicier than we expected. I know that example was a little specific, but that has not happened to me before. <laughs> so to me, that's one of the biggest draws of YouTube, right? Like in traditional media and Hollywood uh, famous people. It's like they're just these entities, these famous people that kind of live these larger than life existences and they're untouchable and unreachable where when YouTube came along it created this whole new breed of, you know, powerful famous person, you would say, in a different sense, but these people of influence that uh, can make massive change and have a massive viewerships but also, just can flip on a camera and talk to you one-on-one -on -one, uh, in their bedroom. It's a dynamic that's always drawn me to YouTube, uh, and as I grow as a creator, specifically in this community, I think, that I'm a part of now online and on Twitter, it's, it's so filled with satire and uh, just all jokes, all fucking bullshit, but... I also want to kind of maintain this level of realism within all that. Now I can tell you one thing, I'm not going to cry as much as Markiplier does. I'm a goddamn disgusting mess, I know that, I know it's horrible, I know. But uh, I do appreciate that side of YouTube that is the connection with the audience and I think that was one of the things he talks about is how he feels like as he got huge, he kind of lost that because it's tough to, you know, you try and please everybody and you end up pleasing nobody, was what he said. And 
uh, that's an interesting thing to deal with as you grow, I think. But there's always going to be people that say, oh, fuck you, Leon, just do song covers, or fuck you, do diss tracks, stop babbling, stop rambling for 15 minutes. Ooh, it's over 10 minutes, ad revenue. As you'll notice, there are no mid-rolls on this video, so shut the fuck up. I really don't give a fuck, man. It's For me, it's the balance, right? I'm not going to turn my channel into a fucking story time channel where I just cry about all of life's problems. But, uh, you know, amidst the meme ballads and the fucking comedic commentaries and the songs, uh, I'll occasionally make videos like this. And the last one I did, I had a pretty good response on. So on that note, um, just fucking love you guys to death. I appreciate uh, you watching my videos on all the support. And I hope that uh, when I occasionally make videos like this, it allows you to get a little better of an uh, idea of who I am as a person outside of just this guy that makes songs on Twitter uh, and helps you get to know me a little bit uh, if that's what you want. And please, if you have any questions, uh, leave them in the comments below. I love chatting with you guys. The best part about YouTube, in my opinion, is not only the dank Pepe memes, but the community, right? That's I think that's what draws everybody. It's the community aspect. Uh, it's people enjoying content together, building something that didn't exist uh, before you came together to build it. And that's fucking cool. And that's what I want to accomplish through my content and through my channel. So for those of you watching that are creators yourselves, uh, I hope we can continue to, to create and get better together. And for those of you that are just consumers and don't make content, maybe you want to one day, uh, I appreciate you for watching. Thanks for, thanks for being part. Uh, of my journey, my process, uh, and I appreciate the fuck out of you. And we'll talk to you guys soon. Peace.